Certainly on the eve of the battle, the expectation is that Africa is going to suffer the fate of North America. It's going to be conquered and settled by European Americans. And um, everything that, I mean, one would say that common sense in the late 19th century says that this is the future of Africa. That Africa will undergo its own kind of manifest destiny and be Europeanized uh, in the fullness of time. And what Agua does is it raises a simple but very important question. It calls common sense about the future of Africa into question, and raises doubts about it. And I think that's tremendously important. More broadly, I, th I mean, I think the book speaks to how we understand empire working, or in this case, not working. I mean, we, we, we know a lot about how it works simply because we know that in most instances, empire succeeds, at least in the short run, whether we're talking about Asia or Africa or the Americas. One of the things that draws me to the Ethiopia story, and one of the things that you know, kept me going over the years of research was how interesting it was to look at a case where empire fails. Because it's by looking at the exceptional case that I think we begin to understand a little bit better what was so contingent about the process. I mean, we, I mean empire is such a powerful force, and, and, and the imbalance in forces is so great that there is a sort of relentless quality to uh, European imperialism in the 19th century. And then we have this singular exception, and I think it's just so interesting to look at, okay, so how did empire fail? You know, what was it about the process that turns out to be contingent after all? And I think the Agua story speaks to that in, in lots of ways.